Okay, so time for a bit of an update on things. We have our new software uh, installed now in the motor controller. On uh, this particular version, if I can make this camera function, has a maximum RPM setting in it as it picks up the tack sensor. It's on the um, uh, output shaft of the uh, motor. So what I'm going to do first of all is give a demo on that. It can be uh, programmed by the RTD Explorer software by Max. Get this to work here now. Max. Uh, maximum minus RPM. In this case I'm going to set a thousand RPM. Press enter. So it gives me a acknowledgement. And if I now get the computer out of the way, get a look at that taco and uh, give her some juice. There we go. You can hear the motor kind of hunting there in the about the thousand RPM mark. So that's that um, function in the software now, that's something I've been very concerned about. You can see the graph there, hopefully the pulses on it, yeah, and they're pulsing, and the throttle is in a set point. So I'm going to change that back, uh, max minus RPM. Maybe around 3200 gives me a little bit of uh, leeway for errors in that. And we've saved that off. Now one of the problems that this new software has generated for me um, has been a tendency for the car to uh, buck at low RP RPMs. Now, when I have the computer hooked up, I have it on this uh, serial extension cable here, as we can see. Now, if I do a first gear takeoff here, which I generally don't do, uh, but it'll just let the motor operate at, won't have to drive the car very fast. You can see that I'm just pulling away there now, nice and gently. Perfectly smooth, don't have any difficulties, the car isn't jumping about the place. So, there we go, just cruise over to the far side here. And I'm just very small current on there now. And we're perfectly happy. Now, that is with the computer hooked up through my serial extension cable here. Now if I turn the key off and I unplug the serial cable from the PC here like so, and just leave it sitting there. Actually, when I had it before it was just sitting on the floor of the car. So we just got a serial extension cable there sitting in a coil. Okay. I'm going to put the key back on and do our pre-charge. He is now on. And I again do the same force gear takeoff into gear, handbrake off, and sure there's no one going to crash into me. I just give her a little bit of power, and we're jumping. The car is just jumping there now. It's jumping at low RPMs, and ooh, we're bucking, we're bucking. Now, once the RPMs come up a bit, I'm fine. I can just ease the car over like so, no problems. So there's RPMs back down again. And if I try to do, let's say I want to reverse, coast is clear. It's kind of hard to show this effect, but 
There we go, bang. You hear the gears banging in the diff and in the gearbox. There she goes again. So, okay, that's definitely a problem. So, handbrake on and key off. Now, here's the trick. If I now unhook my extension cable from my serial port here, and just take it out of there, so I've just got my serial cable sitting on the floor of the car there, and I do a key back on. And we're on. Again, first gear, in gear, handbrake off. Again, make sure I'm not going to hit anybody. And we can pretty much ease the car away from a stop without any difficulties. And spin her around. Again, absolutely no difficulties here. The RPM is very low, maybe 100 RPM or so. We've got no tendency for the vehicle to buck or jump or do anything. So again, another into reverse. Go on, in you go. And just we'll go again in reverse. Just easing away. Now this is what tends to cause the problem. So I'm just easing the car backwards here. Now we can see perfectly happy. So this problem uh, seems to show its face if I have the serial extension cable hooked up to the controller, but I don't have it hooked up to the com com uh, my head's gone on me from this computer. That's it. That's the phrase I was trying to find. So, I can do a second gear takeoff here, as I generally do, into gear, and again, let's make sure we don't hit anybody, because that's generally a bad idea, and we can give her some gas. No difficulties at all. And crash into the Nama estate. And again, do a reverse. Reversing big time now. Again, there's no difficulties there. And we're back to a complete stop. So, just to make the experiment repetitive, I'm going to turn off the key and uh, just sit the camera here. I'm going to hook this extension cable back up uh, to the RS232. We're sitting there now, we're just in a pile on the floor, as you can see. Hook back up. Key is on. And we're nominal. Into first gear. Handbrake off. I'll just try and film like this for a little bit to see if we can actually see the bucking. There she goes. Bang. Now as soon as the RPM comes up, it's just a touch at all. It doesn't happen. If I go again, and get this gas guzzler out of the way. There we go. Didn't happen that time. It's a finicky little problem this is, and uh, my guess would be that my processor is being a bit naughty, so we're into reverse, there she goes, banging the diff gears, 
again as soon as the RPMs come up uh, the, the problem doesn't occur so that's just to show that it's a repeatable occurrence so that's our first uh, the first little difficulty that this controller has ever shown me. Of course, as always, when you add more features to something, you end up causing yourself more grief. Okay, so that's our little uh, problem we're having with the controller. Um, and I would suspect, I mean, I don't know, but my gut feeling is telling me that this uh, cable here is acting as an antenna and it's basically picking up um, some kind of noise and is conducting that back into the controller which is causing it to trigger the RPM um, shutdown. So that's just my guesstimate so we'll see how that turns out.